Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today, I will give you a summary of the movie Just Visiting, which is a 2001 action comedy and an American remake of the French film Le Visiteurs. It stars actors Jean Reno, Christina Applegate, Christian Clavier, Malcolm McDowell, Tara Reid, and Bridget Wilson. In 12th century England, the Earl of Warwick is angry because the princess will be marrying someone else, so he pays a witch to kill her fiancé so he can marry her instead. This fiancé happens to be Count the Bald Malfi, who is now traveling to the king's castle together with his family and his servant, Andrew LePate, always stopping whenever they see someone in need of help, because he's a noble knight that carries on with his family's rules. Courage is more than just a duty. Courage is, as soon as they make it to the castle, Thibault meets with Princess Rosalind, who gives him a locket with a lock of her hair, so he knows her love will always be true. Later during the banquet, the witch puts a special potion in the princess's cup that will make her think Thibault is a monster and will compel her to kill him. When the time for the toast comes, however, Rosalind and Thibault exchange cups to follow an ancient wedding tradition, so Thibault is the one that ends up seeing everyone as monster instead. He punches the queen and stabs Rosalind his sword, for which he's taken to his room and locked up to wait for his death sentence. Some hours later, Andrew shows up with a wizard pretending to be priests, so the guards let them in for the last rites. While Andrew steals some valuables from the room, the wizard explains that he can't bring Rosalind back to life, but he can send Thibault back in time to prevent her death. He makes a potion for it that Andrew tastes first, just in case, and when he sees it's safe, he drinks it as well. The wizard then begins chanting an incantation that sends both men traveling through time. But it isn't until they have both disappeared that he realizes he forgot to add an ingredient to the potion. Thibault and Ander wake up in the same room, except this time, it's an exhibition at a museum in the 21st century. Soon, they're terrorizing the whole museum with their confusion and people's sword, causing everyone to run away from them. There's a family in the elevator they try to ask questions to what the family comes out when they enter and sends them to the parking lot after yelling in fear all the way down. They come to the conclusion they are at the gates of hell and cars or dragons. So, when one comes towards them, they attack and destroy it, ignoring the driver that ends up running away in fear as well. Afterward, they re-enter the museum and find the recreation of a medieval church. So, they get on their knees to pray for salvation until the guards finally find them and arrest them. Their belongings are taken to Julia Malfi, the head of the medieval arts department, who looks just like Rosalind because she's her descendant. She's shocked to see these objects haven't been stolen from the exhibition. They are the real deal and even more surprisingly, it is to see Thebalt's ring as her family's coat of arms. Because of this, she requests to meet these men who immediately think she's Rosalind and treat her as such. Andrew begins kissing her feet and Thibault tries to kiss her lips so the guards pull them back. And when Thibault tries to defend himself, he exclaims, courage is our creed, which gets Julia's attention. That's her family's motto, which makes her think this man is a French cousin of her that was lost at sea. Since they never found the body, they thought he was dead, and she inherited his estate. While she explains this to the guards and the museum director, Thibault finds some history posters and a calendar on the walls of the office that finally makes him understand he's in the future. Julia's family unsure of how to proceed, Julia calls her fiancé Hunter, who likes to call her Bunny. He pretends to worry about her well-being and what she's going through right now, but actually, he's worried that now that Thibault is back, they can't sell the estate anymore. Hunter is only with Julia because of her money, and his real lover is a woman called Amber. Julia and Hunter agree to give Thibault and Andrew a room at their house until they figure things out, which proves to be difficult because as soon as they step out of the museum, Thibault and Andrew get scared and overwhelmed by all the lights and noises. Back in the past, guards are trying to break down the door to Thibault's room. The wizard is faster than them though and manages to finish and drink a new potion to also travel to the future before they can take him. Meanwhile, Julia has managed to get the men to leave the museum and together they are going to meet Hunter at his car. Julia must convince the bald that Ander can't run after the car like a peasant. He must ride inside with them. Although Hunter drives at a reasonable speed, the car experience is still too much for these medieval men who end up very dizzy, and Ander even throws up in Hunter's suitcase. When they make it to Julia's place, Ander can't help noticing the neighbor's gardener, the beautiful Angelique, who is very curious about their arrival. Inside the house, Thibault tries to convince Julia that he's come from the past and that he needs to find a wizard to go back while Andrew makes a mess out of the kitchen by touching all the electronics and even eating the dog's food. Thinking they may have amnesia, Julia plays along for now and promises them she'll help them find a wizard. But for now, they need to wash. After leaving them in the bathroom, Julia and Hunter argue over the men because Hunter thinks they're crazy and perhaps even lie and get their money. Julia swears that's his noble cousin, although she does worry about the fact they'll be going to a very fancy restaurant tonight. She ends up accepting because she wants to prove Hunter wrong. 
Meanwhile, Thibault and Andrew believe the toilet to be a fountain, so they begin washing their faces there. Julia finds them and takes them to the main bathroom, where she runs the bath for them, so there is no more confusion. As soon as she leaves, though, the men start pouring every product they find into the tub. Andrew eats toothpaste and tries drinking from a huge expensive perfume bottle, but Tybalt quickly corrects him. This is not wine, ignorant peasant, it is oil for the back. After he's done, Tybalt forces Andrew to bathe as well, then goes to another room to take a closer look at his family tree. At that moment, Amber calls the house and Andrew picks up the phone at the same time. Hunter does to yell into it, telling Amber very obscene words, and even blow his horn at her. Then he throws the phone into the toilet. So now that he isn't listening to their conversation anymore, Hunter tells Amber it's dangerous to talk now, so he'll call her later. A few moments later, the four of them arrive at one of the fanciest restaurants in town, where they get all eyes on them, because of Thibault's manners. There's also the matter of Ander eating whatever his master throws at him on the floor, which is pretty much creating a scene. A waiter makes them accept Ander at the table, and Thibault only gives in when Julia asks him. Ander is happy to be at the table, but he continues to steal things from trays, while showing his horrible manners until Hunter stops him. After burping and farting, he announces he wants to pee, so Thibault tells him to do it outside. Hunter mentions the fact that Julia has been granted control of the estate, but this doesn't bother Thibault. We think everything he has is also hers because she's a Malfate. This pleases Hunter who tells him the castle is in a bad state, so he's decided they will sell it and the land. But Thibault says, nobody gets to talk over a Malfate, and asks Julia what she wants. Julia, realizing Hunter has been making decisions for her, says she'd like to think about it. In the meantime, Andrew thinks he'll need a torch to be outside and of the wolves, so he tears off various lamps from us until he's scolded by a waiter. He somehow manages to find the bathroom and thinks the urinals are fountains. He also grabs a chlorine tablet and takes a bite from it. Then he steals an umbrella from a stand and a chicken from the kitchen. After stabbing the chicken with the umbrella, he takes it to the fireplace to roast it. The waiters quickly scold him and take him back to his table where they tell Hunter he'll have to pay for all the damage Andrew caused. On the way out, Andrew shares pieces of the chlorine tablet and everyone grabs one thinking they're mints. Julia and Tybalt quickly spit theirs, but Hunter likes it and even takes another one. When they arrive home, Tybalt and Andrew destroy a television thinking people are trapped inside, destroying the room in the process. Julia is now starting to wonder if Hunter is right, and these guys are insane. That very same night, the wizard shows up at the museum. The next morning, Thibault wakes up Julia extremely early, so they can begin their search for the wizard. Andrew goes outside for fresh air and sees Angelique being yelled at and mistreated by the neighbor that hired her. So he goes over and threatens him with his knife, demanding him to apologize to the lady and kiss her feet. Thibault and Julia find them just in time to stop things from getting worse, and Thibault thinks the man is a noble because of the shields on his tie. The neighbor thinks this is all too weird and gets away, but Andrew still needs a punishment. And since Julia doesn't let him hang him, he leaves him working for Angelique for the day while he's out. While chit-chatting, Angelique discovers the horrible condition Andrew is in and tells him not to worry because slavery is illegal in the USA. Andrew shows her the treasure he had stolen from Thibault's medieval bedroom, and that gives her an idea. Meanwhile, Julia and Thibault are going to the city, so Julia has prepared a special sticker with her number that she sticks to Thibault's chest in case he gets lost. When a thief takes her purse, Thibault catches him and throws him on top of a car to cut his hand for stealing. But Julia stops him before he can do anything drastic. While she distracts the crowd that has formed around them, Thibault sees a woman walk by wearing an outfit similar to a witch's and follows her, losing Julia in the process. The woman tells Thibault she isn't a witch, so he continues his search around the city until he finds a bar that is decorated to simulate an old tavern. When he enters it and introduces himself, People laugh and don't take him seriously. One man even teases him by waving the cue stick. Thibault easily cuts it in two with his sword, but since he's feeling thirsty instead of killing him, he buys a drink for himself and everyone in the bar, earning their approval. In the meantime, the wizard has been busy. He's acquired some new clothes and a suitcase, plus a bunch of games from a toy store that he takes back with him to his hotel room. Julia is called to the museum where she's told about the sudden apparition that burned the bed. And while looking around, she finds a necklace that wasn't there before. It has a hidden message from the wizard telling them where he's staying. Hunter's been busy too. He has hired a private investigator and is now giving him the empty bottle of perfume with the Thibault's prints so he can find out if he's the real cousin or not. At that moment, Julia calls him to tell him she lost Thibault, but she quickly hangs up when she receives a call on her other phone. It's the people from the bar who found her sticker and are telling her to come pick up Thibault. When she arrives at the bar, they want her to drink and sing with them. But as soon as she mentions the wizard, Thibault changes his mind and is ready to go. Julia tells him that after seeing the museum, 
she started to believe his story, which is a big deal for her. Together, they go to the hotel and meet with the wizard, who promises them the new potion will be finished in the evening. However, after they're gone, the wizard tests the mix he currently has and causes the room to explode. The only parts left of him are his boots and his hat. Meanwhile, Angelique is teaching Andrew how to live a free life. She drives them downtown and after selling a ruby from the stolen treasure box, they go shopping and sightseeing. After getting new clothes and good food, Angelique convinces him that he can have more than what his master allows him. In a different part of town, Tibalt and Julia are having a meal at a diner. She tells him she promises to take good care of him while he's in this confusing era for which he calls her lion-hearted, carrying the courage of the family. She doesn't agree with this. She thinks she's more bunny-hearted. So, Thibault takes her outside and teaches her how to use the sword on a pile of trash. At first, she's nervous and hesitant, but soon she gets the hang of it and gains more confidence in herself. At a fancier restaurant, Hunter and Amber are also having dinner while Amber complains about having to hide their relationship. They decide to distract themselves by going dancing, and they end up in the same bar as Angelique and Ander, who has started a conga line. When the couples bump into each other, Hunter panics and tells them Amber is his sister before taking her away, not noticing that Amber has dropped her purse and Ander has found it. When they return home, Angelique convinces Andrew to quit his job so they can travel the world together. But when Thibault arrives, Andrew is too nervous to speak. Disappointed, Angelique leaves thinking she was wrong about him, and now Andrew is stuck not knowing who to choose. While getting ready to sleep, Julia tells Hunter that Thibault is a very special guy, and that's why she's decided to give him back his estate, which annoys Hunter. Back at the hotel, the cops have cleaned the destroyed room and found the parts of the wizard's body all over the room. When they aren't around, he chants a special spell and puts himself back together. The following morning, the private investigator tells Hunter that Thibault isn't the disappeared cousin. While the wizard shows up at Julia's home, he prepares the ingredients for the potion in her kitchen, which she then mixes in the blender. While Thibault searches for Andrew, who finally gets brave, and tells him he doesn't want to go back. This angers Thibault because Andrew is property and he doesn't want to let him go. So Julia intervenes and tells him it would be the noble thing to do. Thibault accepts because he can't say no to her. Before leaving to meet with Angelique, Andrew gives Julia Amber's purse, which immediately makes her suspicious because he doesn't have a sister. At that moment, Hunter arrives, and Thibault wants to kill him for having insulted Julia's honor, but she wants to do this herself. When he accuses Thibault of being a criminal that only wants the money, Julia tells him that's actually Hunter himself and breaks up with him. As she takes off her ring, he tells her she's a bunny that couldn't survive without him. But now she has her new confidence. Julia turns down those words. She hates him for making her feel like a bunny when she's always been a lioness, smart and strong. So she takes the bolt's sword, exclaims, Courage is my creed, as she hits Hunter in the groin with it before throwing him out of the house. Now the potion is ready. They put it in a bottle and get ready to go because it must be drunk at the same spot where they arrived. However, Hunter has already called the cops on Thibault, so the trio leaves through the back door and takes a taxi. The police begin chasing them, which the cabbie isn't a fan of, so Julia pays him extra promises to tell the judge that he was a hostage. The cabbie accepts and starts driving as fast as possible, but sadly it's rush hour, and they get stuck in the city traffic, so they get off and steal two horses from the cops, which they ride through the city, and even get on the train before finally getting to their destination without getting caught. They rush to the medieval exhibition, and before leaving, Thibault tells Julia he's proud of her and gives her the locket with her great-grandmother's hair. In return, Julia gives him a hair grip to give the princess. By the time the police arrive, it's too late. Thibault and the wizard have drunk the potion and gone back to their own era. The banquet has been frozen in time, so Thibault gets it going again by kissing the princess. When the time for the toast comes, he offers his cup to the earl as a sign of peace, so the earl runs away and jumps off the window not to be caught. Later, wealthy Thibault and Rosalind are taking a walk together. He gives her the hair grip as a wedding gift, and they kiss. Back in the present, Hunter finds the blender the wizard used. Thinking it's just a milkshake, he drinks what is left of the potion and reads the enchantment thinking it's just a note someone left. He suddenly appears in the past too, and a local guard catches him saying he will make a great servant, while the peasants find his cell phone and get scared of it. Some days later, Julia goes to the Malfit estate ready to take care of it. She meets the attorney handling the French interest who is very handsome and knows a lot about her family because he has genuine interest in it. They both hate it off immediately. Meanwhile, Ander and Angelique are on the road in a new car, making their way to have a great time in Las Vegas. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this and thanks for watching.